Good afternoon again, everybody. Welcome to take two of uh, our Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants session today. Um, I guess the bonus we can take away, we, we've had technical issues, but we have way more classes joining us on screen now, so um, hopefully it'll make for a better question and answer session coming up shortly. So um, those just joining, there's the chat bar on the left. Um, if you click the blue box, you can send questions to Dave and Amy that way. As well, when the time comes, um, you can unmute your microphone and ask Dave and Amy a question that way. So without further ado, National Geographic Explorers of the Year, Dave and Amy Freeman. Uh, fingers crossed, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, we're really excited to be here today uh, to, to talk with you. Um, and we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. So everybody can see some photos um, that we're going to share. Just one second. OK. So can everybody see um, a picture of a monkey hanging from a tree? Yeah. OK, super. All right. Um, well, this, this photo was taken in the rainforest. Amy and I have explored all over the world, from the Amazon to the Arctic. And one of our favorite places to go is the Amazon rainforest. Uh, so I wanted to show you a few of the animals that I see when we're down there. Um, over the last 10 years, Amy and I have spent a, a, a total of about a year in the Amazon um, studying the plants and animals and the, and the people in the rainforest because it's an amazing place, one of the most biodiverse places on Earth, um, and, and it's also just full of, of a fascinating array of different cultures and tribes. Um, so these... Howler monkeys are some of our favorite animals. They are the loudest animals in the rainforest. You can hear them for up to two miles through the canopy, and we use them as our alarm clock. So as soon as uh, we start waking up in the morning, as, as dawn arrives, these howler monkeys start to howl, and we know it's time to wake up. Another one of our favorite animals um, are these. These are river dolphins. They're freshwater dolphins and there are actually three species of freshwater dolphins that live in the Amazon rainforest. Uh, so the the um, the freshwater dolphins, there, there are the gray river dolphins, which is the one in this picture, and then there are also two different kinds, two different species of pink river dolphins, and they're bright pink in color. Uh, really amazing animals, and I think one of the things that is most interesting about the river dolphins is that until 2007, less than 10 years ago, scientists thought there were only two different types of river dolphins, and then they found a third type of river dolphin, another species um, living in the Bolivian rainforest, in uh, a country called Bolivia, in the Amazon rainforest. And this is a bright pink dolphin that's like seven feet long, and scientists had no idea it was there. So I like to think if, if you can have a seven foot long pink dolphin swimming around in the rivers of the Amazon, how many different species of frogs or insects or plants are there that scientists have no idea or exist. Um, the Amazon is a place that is still ripe for exploration. There's a lot we can learn about it. So that could be a place um, that you go. Um, maybe some of you will become scientists and explorers and you'll want you'll go down to the rainforest and learn more about these plants and animals. There's so much more that we can learn there. Amy and I have also spent a lot of time exploring North America as well. And this map shows a three-year, 11,700-mile uh, journey that we took. And rather than traveling by car or plane or train, we traveled under our own power. We were traveling by kayak, 
in, when we were on the oceans, um, by canoe when we were in the middle of the continent, and then in the winter we traveled by dog sled. Um, and the reason we were traveling this way rather than using cars or trains or planes is that we wanted to go slowly and be able to in, encounter lots of animals and different ecosystems so we could study them um, and share them with students like you. So all along the way we saw all sorts of different um, animals. Some of them like these stellar sea lions we only found in a small area along the Pacific Ocean in British Columbia, Canada, while other animals we encountered all over, like this black bear. We saw black bears along the Pacific Ocean, we saw black bears in the middle of Canada, we, we saw black bears in the United States. Um, black bears live in a very wide range. So some of the animals live in very small areas and others are, are very widespread. Some of the animals that we saw, like these, um, sea stars and sea anemones, uh, these live in the intertidal zone along the edge of the ocean. So some of the animals we saw are very small, but we also saw some really big animals, like these guys. These are humpback whales. Um, they're about 60 feet long, and they weigh about 50 tons, so they're huge. And they swam right up to us and sat on the surface about 15 feet away from us in our kayaks and we could actually see this giant eyeball looking back at us um, from right next to us. It was one of the most amazing animal encounters we've ever had. So these are a few examples of some of the, the animals that we've encountered and the places that we've visited along the way. Um, and I, but we also want to share with you a little bit about uh, what we're doing next. Um, a week from tomorrow, Amy and I are going to paddle our canoe into the Boundary Waters Wilderness Area. Um, oh, sorry, I just saw a, a question from a Siemens class, and they are asking, were your lives ever in danger? Um, there have been a few instances where where we felt like we were in danger, uh, you know, a big storm coming through or something like that. But uh, typically, we're very careful uh, about um, the decisions that we make. We're cautious, and we typically feel safer when we're out in the wilderness than we do if we're, you know, in a in a big city or something like that. Uh, we, we don't see being out in the wilderness as a dangerous place. Um, it's, it's a fun place to, to explore and learn about as long as we're careful. That's a good question. Thanks for asking. Um, so this, anyways, this wilderness area, this is where we're going to spend an entire year. We're going to start next Wednesday and we'll spend an entire school year. So if you're just starting second grade right now, we're going to be inside the wilderness until the beginning of your third grade year, a whole year from now, so a really long time. Um, and this Boundary Waters is a very special place. It's a maze of lakes and river. There's rivers. There's about 1,200 miles of, of waterways and um, lakes and rivers and streams that we'll be able to explore, and we'll be uh, communicating uh, through the Internet, through our website, Wilderness Classroom, so you guys can follow along and you can actually help make decisions for us um, and communicate with us while we're out there. We're going to do video conferences from the wilderness. You can email us questions um, so you can learn about this amazing place. Uh, it's, it's the largest wilderness area east of the Rocky Mountains and north of the Everglades in Florida, um, and it's also our most popular wilderness area in the entire country. And you may wonder, what is a wilderness area? Um, well, a wilderness area is, is a place that has no roads. Um, there's no cars. There's no buildings. It's, it's, uh, they try to keep it as wild as it was a 1,000 years ago. Um, you're not allowed to use motorized or mechanized things, so we'll be traveling 
under our own power with canoes and with sled dogs. Um, so here, here we are in our canoe in the boundary waters. This is sort of what the boundary waters looks like on a foggy morning, right, as the sun is coming up. And we'll also be traveling with our sled dogs. And so from December through March, all the lakes will be frozen and covered in snow. And so we'll be using these sled dogs to help pull all of our supplies, all the food we need, all the clothes that we need to keep us warm. Um, the dogs will help us pull those things, and Amy and I will be traveling on skis or on snowshoes. And the whole time we'll be staying in a tent. Here's a picture of what our tent looks like. You can see there's a, um, a, uh, a pipe coming out the side here, and that pipe is for our stove. So inside the tent there's a, a stove that uses wood to heat the tent, and also that's what we use to cook on. So we'll be uh, gathering a lot of firewood, sawing up wood, and chopping wood um, to keep that stove going, especially in the winter when it's really cold. Um, we'll also be gathering some food like blueberries, um, and we'll be catching fish, but a lot of our food will be brought in by friends. Every few weeks they'll bring us food um, that is bought at the grocery store. So most of our food will come from the outside, but we will gather some of our food. And there'll be all sorts of different animals and plants that we'll be able to study, like moose and loons, which is the, a really cool bird. Um, there are more um, wolves, which made these tracks, than any other place um, in the continental United States. So there's several thousand wolves that live in this area that we'll be able to study and hopefully see. Uh, maybe we can take some pictures of them to share with you. And lots of other animals like otters and beavers um, and other animals that we'll be able to study and send pictures of and, and share with you uh, through, through the Internet. Um, so we hope that you'll follow along on that journey, and you can do that through our website, wildernessclassroom.com. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop sharing the screen now, and um, I'd like to open it up to questions. So if you... Um, if anybody has any questions for us, you can either send it in through the chat or feel free to unmute your microphone and you can share with us that way. Okay, so Dave uh, and Amy, I'm still here. Um, what I can do if you want, because I know some of the classes who've just logged in, so I can kind of coordinate the Q&A for a few minutes if you like. That sounds great. All right, so... Um, let's get started with, um, we have one that actually came in through the chat sidebar. So this is from our grade twos. They're wondering, were your lives ever in danger on any of your trips? Well, we answered that one already. Um, can I move on to the other one? How many cons have we been to? Sure. Okay. Um, let's see. I have been to five continents. Um, I haven't been to Australia or Antarctica yet. I, I hope to get to get to those sometime soon. And Amy, how about you? Just two continents for me, North America and South America. Okay, very cool. Let's, um, I know Mr. Call's class just joined us today. Do you guys have some questions for Dave and Amy? No questions just yet, but we're going to come up with a couple good ones, I'm sure. Okay, sounds good. Um, Mrs. Yvonne's class. Yeah, we do have several questions. Hi, I'm Audrey, and uh, what was your favorite place you've been so far? Oh, favorite place. You know, that's a really hard question. Um, for me, I think it's probably... Um, this big park in the Amazon rainforest called the Pacaya Samiria Park. It's in Peru. Um, and it's, it's an amazing place because no matter how long we spend there, months we've spent months there, and almost every day we see some sort of animal or plant or something new that we've never seen before. So I think that's probably my favorite place that we've explored so far. And my favorite place is the coast 
um, in the Inside Passage, so the British Columbia coast and uh, like southeast Alaska. And that's because, well, there's temperate rainforest on the land, and then the ocean is just so full of life. There's so many interesting plants and animals there, including these great big humpback whales that approached us. Very cool. Let's grab another question from the same class. I see lots of hands, so I think they might be able to go for a while. Hi, my name is Amy, and have you ever been to Zambia, Africa? Ooh, no, we, we have never been to Zambia before. Have you been there? Should we go? <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kale, and have you ever been to the Costa Rica rain, Costa Rican rainforest? Um, yes, I have been to the Costa Rican rainforest. In fact, um, that was the first, that was the first um, rainforest that we visited through the wilderness classroom was the Costa Rican rainforest um, about 10 years ago. I used to live there, or I lived there for one year. Wow. Oh, neat. I bet that was really fun. Yes, it was. One, we'll do one more and then we'll share the wealth. Hey, my name is Ryan. Have you ever been to Germany in California? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Where, have we been to where? Yosemite in California. Oh. <laughs> have you been there, Amy? I, I have been there, yeah. It was quite a while ago, and I'd like to go again. I've never been there, but it's a place that I really want to go. There's a lot of places to explore out, out there in the world. So any classes, I can see there's several along the bottom who are just tuning in and just watching. Feel free to use your chat sidebar, the blue box in the top corner of your tools, and you can send questions right in to Dave and Amy, and I can read them, or if they see any, they could read them um, as well. So if I just look a little further down, back to our grade twos, they were wondering, um, together as a couple, how many trips have you been on together? Let's see. Um, well, we kayaked around Lake Superior, so that took us two months. And then we spent six months uh, canoeing across South America. And then we spent three years canoeing, kayaking, and dog sledding across North America. And then we canoed and sailed from... Um, from Minnesota, from the Boundary Waters to Washington, D.C. Uh, those are sort of the main big trips that we've done together. We've do and then lots of small ones. Um, but those, those are all like, you know, at least two or three months long. So that's five. So five I guess one. that's five. Okay. And then a, a follow-up question from that group. They're kind of wondering about any bumps and bruises or or injuries that may have happened on any of the trips? Hmm. You know, we haven't ever had any major injuries, um, but, you know, probably a few bumps and bruises with every trip. Um, during the North American Odyssey, I had a cut that I got from a rock just when I was walking around in our campsite, um, but that was something that we could deal with out there in the field. So it healed up just fine. Yeah, no, yeah, we've never had any, you know, had to go to the hospital or anything like that. Um, we're pretty careful we, because if you get hurt when you're far out in the wilderness, um, it can be harder to deal with, so we try to just prevent that from happening. Okay, let's check in with uh, Mr. Call's class. I know it was a bit of a surprise for you guys when you popped in on camera, but it's a pleasant surprise for us to have you joining us. All right. Well, I see another question. Um, what is it like to explore the wild from Luke? And I would say, you know, exploring is really fun. I mean, it, it's our favorite thing to do. Um, you know, when you're out in the wild, it's, um, it's peaceful. It's usually quiet. Um, uh, and there's, there's a lot of things that you can learn about. Um, and in general, it's just a lot of fun. So I would encourage all of you to, to go out and spend time outside and, and 
visit some wild places. Okay. Do you guys, I know this might be tough to think about right now, but with something so big ahead of you, do you have a long range? Do you know what's coming up next, or is it one trip at a time? <laughs> it's basically one trip at a time. We found, well, especially right now when we're, we're getting ready to go on this upcoming trip that we can't think about, um, you know, what's, what's a, a couple years down the road or something, so we're focused on getting ready for this, this trip. Um, but once we're out there, we do spend a lot of time thinking. So by the time we're done, we'll probably have come up with our idea for the next one. Okay. Uh, another or question popping in on the chat is, what kind of considerations go to planning the food for a trip, for an expedition? Oh, well, um, there's a lot of planning that goes into that. Um, uh, figuring out how we're going to get our food and where our food, you know, how much food we need. There's a lot of math <laughs> and uh, a lot of, of, of um, sort of thinking about that. And But our meals are pretty basic. Um, we eat a lot of the same food that you would eat at home. We try to eat uh, sort of whole foods like um, rather than a lot of processed food. We eat a lot of oatmeal for breakfast, um, granola for breakfast. We use powdered milk rather than regular milk because we don't have a refrigerator. Uh, we eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly, uh, cheese with tortillas or, or some sort of bread for lunch. Uh, and then for dinner, we eat a lot of spaghetti, um, a lot of rice and beans. And then we have we dehydrate vegetables, so we take the water out of the vegetables, so they're really dry and light, and we add those into our food, um, so that we have enough fruits and vegetables to eat. Okay, great question. I know some might be thinking too. What about the dogs when you're on a, um, a dog sledding expedition when you're using them? Yeah. So you know, typically we. We resupply with food every two to like six weeks, um, and the the dogs eat like a, a high sort of protein, high fat dog food um, that you know in many ways is similar to what you would feed your dog at home, um, but it's like really high quality, really good, and they eat about two pounds of food every day. And then we also give them about a quarter pound of lard, which is like animal fat, uh, that they eat as well when it's really cold out to help keep them warm. Okay, let's duck over to um, this is Yvonne's class again. I saw lots of hands before. Are there any more questions? Hi, my name is Austin, and have you ever come across sharks? Oh. Ooh. Yes, we have. Uh, when we were kayaking during the North American Odyssey, coming down the East Coast, paddling along the um, along the shore in Florida, we saw sharks almost every day. We would see sharks even swimming underneath our kayak. Now, none of them approached us, but like, we weren't scared of them at all. It was just sort of like they were they were just kind of always there. And there were smaller sharks. What kind were they? Did? Oh, we saw bonnethead sharks, which is sort of like a small hammerhead shark. Um, we saw nurse sharks. I think we saw some black tip reef sharks. So a few different species. No great whites. Though. No, no really big ones. Darn, that'd be really cool to see a shark about the size of your kayak, but maybe a little nerve wracking too. Yeah, I think the biggest one we saw was a nurse shark, and it was probably about um, eight or nine feet long. So it was pretty big, but not as big as our kayaks. Yeah. Uh, another question from that group. Oh, lots of hands. That's what I like to see. Hello, my name is Ethan, and how did your food get to you? Yeah, how does our food get to, you, get to us? Um, 
Well, on most of our expeditions, we we get our food when we get we pass through a town. So so we'll be out in the wilderness for like you know two weeks or six weeks, um, and then we'll we'll go to a, a small town and we'll pick up supplies and then we'll go out into the wilderness again. But for this year that we're going to spend in the wilderness, we're not going to leave. We're never going to go to a town. And so um, we have volunteers, we have friends that will bring food into us. So they'll get the food at a store in town um, and they will bring us like 50 pounds or 100 pounds of food, however much we need. Um, they'll bring it into the wilderness, into the forest and meet up with us. Um, and that's how we'll get our food. Good question. Um, let's see, one more just popped up over the chat bar from our grade twos, and they're wondering, you know, you spend a lot of time in the ocean, in the bush, on the tundra, is there, uh, as a question will be for both of you, is there a spot where you prefer to be? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, hmm. I, I don't have a favorite, I don't think. <laughs> I think if I had to pick um, a favorite way to travel, um, it's by dog sled. I really like working with the sled dogs, so that's that's really my favorite sort of way of traveling. But, like, you know, if we're canoeing or kayaking or, you know, being on the ocean or being on a lake or hiking through a forest, like, I don't have a favorite. They're all really interesting in their own ways. But if I have to choose one mode of travel, I think dog sled is my favorite. Very good. I like that answer because, you know, just being outside is good enough, I think, in a lot of situations, even if it's just your backyard. Yeah. You don't have to go far to find places to be outside, right in your neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Call's class, do you guys have any questions? Thank you, Josh. Oops. Go ahead, Josh. Um, have you ever had to kill an animal for safety? Have we ever had a, do we have a solar panel with us? Is that what you were asking? He, he asked if you ever had to kill an animal out of safety. Oh! <laughs> That's a little different. Uh, uh, no, we, you know, we've only, we've only been attacked by, uh, two animals in all of our exploring, and the only two animals we've ever been attacked by are, are ants and mosquitoes. So we've never, I mean, I guess we've swatted mosquitoes before, but, like, we've never, you know, ha had a, a bear or a shark or, you know, like a big animal come after us. Um, sometimes we catch fish for food, but we've never we've never had to like you know fend off an animal or anything like that. Uh, that's a good question. But going back to the question you thought you heard, do you bring a power source like that, something for solar power? Or? <laughs> we do. We we have solar panels that we put out in the sun, um, and that's how we charge our cameras and our computers and things like that. Okay, very cool and very green. Um, let's see, we'll just, before we move to our other class, do you have another class or question there, Mr. Call? Yeah, we have one more. All right. How long have you guys been exploring the Earth? Hmm, well, I mean, we've both been really into camping and exploring, even when we were kids. You know, we would go to parks near our houses, even though we both lived in the city. Um, and then we, we went on camping trips in the Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness when we got a little older. Um, so I, I don't know, I sort of feel like I've been exploring ever since I was like six years old or something. Yeah. I, we started spending time outside when we were kids and slowly we gained more skills and started sort of going on longer trips and spending more time out in the wilderness. Uh, and I think it was really sort of in college that we started, we didn't know each other then, but that's when we both started sort of 
uh, having jobs that allowed us to be out in the wilderness and in the summers and, and uh, you know, started really exploring a lot. But we started when we were your age. Okay. Um, let's visit uh, Mrs. Yvonne's class one more time. And then um, if no more questions come in the chat, um, we'll end the broadcast. I think with the way things started, it wasn't looking promising, but I think we got a good session in despite the technical mishap. So, um, yeah, I guess it just shows any problem solvable if you work at it for a minute or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for your help on that. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, go ahead if you have another question. Um, hi, my name is Steven, and have you ever been to the African savannas? Uh, I have, yes. I have been to the African savannas. Amazing, amazing place. Like, all those zebras and lions and elephants and uh, it's like no other place on earth. I would rec it's one of those places like the Amazon rainforest that I think everyone should try and visit because it's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, the hands just keep coming. Go ahead for another one or two more questions. Hi, my name's Arnana, and have you ever um, traveled from the sky like any planes, anything? I'm, I'm sorry, did you understand that? Can you repeat your question? Um, have you guys ever traveled in um, planes and sky? Oh, yeah. Have we ever traveled in a plane? Oh, well, we have traveled in planes in order to get... Um, to the places we're exploring, so we traveled in a plane to get down to South America. Um, we flew into Lima, Peru, um, when we started our trip and left from Brazil. Um, that's the, sort of the main plane travel I've done. Yeah, so a lot of times we take planes to get uh, sort of close to these wild places, and then once we're there, then we travel in a canoe or in a dog sled, things like that. Okay, one more question. Hi, my name is Jan. I was wondering, what do you do to entertain yourself? Hmm, what do we do to entertain ourselves? Well, I think um, probably similar things that you would do. So we bring books along and sometimes listen to music or play cards, that kind of thing. Um, but another big thing about when we're out in the wild is, is I really like to just kind of find a comfortable place to sit and, and look out at the lake or look out, you know, over, over the landscape. And I like to fish, so I spend a lot of time fishing for fun, like when I have free time when I'm in the wilderness. Thank you. All right, well, great questions and um, classes. Thanks for your patience. Dave and Amy, thanks for your patience. Um, Dave and Amy are about to embark on their awesome year-long adventure in the wilderness. And with any luck, we'll be able to connect a little bit along the way to get some updates. So keep an eye out for newsletters or updates from Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. And um, once again, thank you so much for joining us. And... Uh, I've turned the microphones on the classroom, so if you guys want to say thank you, if you want to wave, say goodbye to Dave and Amy. Um, All right, thanks a lot. We're going off air. Thanks, everybody. Bye.